today's video, we are going to be taking a look at Ubuntu 21.10 for the Raspberry Pi 4. And this is a development branch image because Ubuntu 21.10 still hasn't been officially released for desktop PCs or the Raspberry Pi. So before we jump in, I do want to mention a few things. As you might notice, if you're a regular viewer of my channel, I really haven't been posting videos that much this summer. And I'm really sorry for that because I've actually been traveling a ton this summer. And making videos while traveling was just hard. I kind of wanted to do that, but I just really never had the time. And I wasn't at my house where I have all my equipment. So it just wasn't as easy as I hoped for. So, yeah, but now I'm back home and school is starting, life is getting back to normal, so hopefully I'll be able to make around one to two videos every week, and if I really have time with my schedule, I'll try to make three in a week. But I'm going to get back to a more normal stage of uploading videos to YouTube. So, yeah, let's jump right in here. So, first of all, Ubuntu 21.10 actually uses GNOME 40. The last version of Ubuntu, which was 21.04, actually still used GNOME 38, which is still a bit old. So now we're finally on GNOME 40, and with GNOME 40, you get a lot of amazing features, like your desktop switching things are on the top right here, rather than on the side, like in GNOME 38. And now all our apps are laid out on this like side little panel thing, and it really it just looks cool i like the way it feels you can scroll through it and it actually has amazing things with a touchpad if you're using this on a laptop with a raspberry pi you're obviously not going to have anything like that but for a system like this it's pretty cool so let's take a look at the features of gnome 40 first to see basically what they've added in this new version of ubuntu 21.10 so let's start out with the settings application because let's just see what we are actually running right now so let's go over to about and right here so what we're running right here we're running unknown graphics controller unknown disk capacity we're running ubuntu Empress injury to the de development branch and we are running this with wayland which is pretty awesome wayland i love wayland it's really smooth but as you can see this is still very beta so the performance of this don't compare it to the official image i will be making a video once that comes out but this is just to see what they're going to be having basically so, so far it looks pretty cool I want to look at the appearance tab since in the appearance tab we should have some pretty cool settings so right now we are on the light theme which the light theme is okay I just don't really like it the dark theme dark theme is so much better like we open up the file manager it's all dark I really do actually enjoy this theme it's really awesome you can change the icon sides you can make it where it auto hides the dock so we do that if we like made something bigger I think it would automatically hide it which honestly that's a pretty good feature i really i think that's I, I honestly like that but i'll turn that off for this video but the settings everything else is pretty standard like every other version of ubuntu it's just the default gnome settings but yeah so this is basically the gnome settings next if we go back to our application center right here to open this you can also hit the windows key or the super key and and it will open up your desktops where you can kind of switch between them which is also a really neat feature so next what comes here we have additional drivers which really isn't anything for the raspberry pi we have solitaire calendar videos chromium i installed myself through the app store htop i also installed myself text editor all these things i mean they're just really simple basic things you'd see on ubuntu like i really don't feel the need to go through all of them because honestly there's really nothing special in here and yeah so these are basically all the ubuntu applications as you can see here and yeah so now i want to take a look at using like the different desktops on ubuntu and see is it really like does it work well on this raspberry pi so here we have our file manager let's go ahead and open up a terminal in this window too so you see i mean it's pretty snappy it's not the best thing you've ever seen but yeah we click activities we can scroll to the next desktop and right here let's say we could have our ubuntu software open so we can have two different two different things open like we here we have ubuntu software we scroll back and now we have three desktops so as you open up more desktops you're automatically going to be gaining newer desktops so you can open up tons of desktops 
on Ubuntu. So that is actually really cool. So I mean, that's using the desktops like that. It's just a pretty simple feature, but I really do like the layout in GNOME 40 more than in GNOME 38 for sure. So let's go back to this desktop right here and we'll just close out that. And yeah, so now I wanna take a look at the system resource usage and see how much are we using on idle because Ubuntu has been known on the Raspberry Pi with GNOME for using tons of RAM and CPU. So let's see what it actually is using right now. So right now our cores, our cores are pretty expected. We have four cores and our memory is clocked at one point gig, I mean a whole gigabyte right now, not clocked, but it's out using a whole gigabyte, which is basically the same as the older versions of Ubuntu, but that still is pretty high for a Raspberry Pi distribution considering most people who own a Raspberry Pi actually own a 2 gigabyte or a 4 gigabyte model. So you're not going to have tons of room for space in Ubuntu if you own like a 1 gigabyte Pi or a 2 gigabyte Pi, but for other Pis it is a bit better. But yeah, so that's basically the system resource usage. NeoFetch, let's look at NeoFetch. So I, I actually am clocked right here at 2 gigahertz. Just for a better experience, I wasn't getting the greatest experience with the clock 1.5 GHz, so I just upped it to that. And everything else is pretty similar. We're on GNOME 40.2. Right now, there is GNOME 40.3 released for distros like Arch or Fedora, but Ubuntu is going to be running 40.2 as far as I know. But yeah, that's basically a Neo Fetch. So now, let's just look at some web browsing. And one thing I want to mention Firefox was awfully slow for me and awfully i mean it was just been so slow i don't know why but we'll test it once more right now and see if it's any better so like i type in pi 4 all right so it's just it's just not that old speed that i'm used to on the raspberry pi like look at that it lagged and now i clicked it three times because it lagged and now i have three windows open so firefox just on here isn't a good experience i don't know why so what I've done, I went ahead and installed Chromium. You can either install that through the App Store or by using the terminal and writing sudo snap install Chromium. And you see now you just need to close Firefox and we'll do a web browsing test in Chromium just for the better overall experience and just better results. I mean, just, just to see that. So here's Chromium. Let's, it does take a little bit longer to launch for some reason. But once it's launched, it should be doing pretty well. So right here we have Chromium. Let's go ahead and maximize the window. And let's just do some classic web browsing like Pi4. It's what I do in all my videos. So right here we have Raspberry Pi Organization. We click it and you see that's snappy. That's the kind of web browsing that I wanna have on my desktop. Scrolling through everything is pretty smooth. It's not the greatest of all, but it's still not that terrible. So yeah amazon.com and i typed that wrong so let's fix that up all right so here's amazon you see it loads up pretty quickly and it just works that's what i'm happy about i mean having a desktop that works all right is pretty good so now let's look at video playback so video playback on here isn't going to be the greatest just i mean it just isn't the greatest on Ubuntu or any GNOME based distro since GNOME is a pretty heavy desktop environment. But here we are, let's let it load up and I'm going to be doing this in 720p because 1080p never works out that well for me. So we're at 720, let's right click stats for nerds and let's just skip this over to the middle right here. Alright, so here we are and what are we dropping right now? We have dropped 70 frames out of 540. So I mean it does it, it looks okay. It's not lagging that much at 720, which hopefully it shouldn't because it's only at 720, but it is still dropping quite a few frames, which is a bit annoying. But I mean it's alright. So this is the video playback on Ubuntu 21.10. So yeah, let's just exit out of here. And to talk about my final thoughts, so this is basically just a short little walkthrough of the development images of Ubuntu 21.10, which I will leave a link so you can download it in the description if you're interested in trying out yourself. But I mean, I really wouldn't recommend it for daily usage. If you're just someone who wants to tinker around with it, go right ahead. It's a pretty cool desktop and it's, it's still Ubuntu. So 
I've never really been the hugest fan of Ubuntu GNOME on my Raspberry Pi, just because it uses so much system resource usage, and it just isn't the greatest desktop. However, if you might have seen my video on Manjaro GNOME 40, man, Manjaro GNOME 40 runs like speed on the Raspberry Pi with only using like 500 megabytes of RAM on idle. So it's like half of no Ubuntu's with much better experience, oh, with a much better user experience. But the thing you're going to be losing is, I mean, Jaro is based on Arch. So if you're someone who uses a lot of apt and Debian-based distros, you might be a little unfamiliar. But I would definitely recommend t testing out Manjaro GNOME 40 since it, it is really an awesome experience. But yeah, this is just a short overview of Ubuntu 21.10. I hope you guys enjoy this, and if you have any other comments about this desktop or anything about my videos, let me know down below in the comments below, and I'll be trying to make more videos for you guys soon. So, thanks for watching!